Hey, why'd you walk like such, <laughs> such a knob? Uh, please, hello everybody. Um, please don't be fooled by my appearance. It's actually quite a nice day here in Sardinia, but we're sat in the shade. It is Sunday, so hopefully this will be out later on in the day. <laughs> Someone's got to do some work, mate. We're, no guarantees, I've told you before. The internet is extremely slow and hard to get to. So uh, we'll do our best, won't we? Oh, yeah. So we've got quite a broad spectrum of questions and we're going to try and answer them all as best we can. But we might be quite quick because we do ramble as I'm doing now. So, yes, we'll do that, shall we? Ready? So this is from Janice. Hello, Janice. Hello, <laughs> so Jan. she says... Are you concerned about the virus or do you think you'll be okay as you're living off grid and not seeing many people? Are we concerned about the virus? Yes. Do we feel safe in this closed down campsite? Yes. We haven't moved. We haven't left the campsite since we got here. I'm not concerned f for our own safety. It's um, the other people that we're thinking about. And the world in general. Yes, um, and we don't see anyone here as Meg said. So we feel quite away from it all. Uh, Auntie Jane. Hello, Auntie Jane. Who made Teddy Ralph? Uh, quick backstory, if you don't know. This is little Teddy Ralph. Is, um, I don't know what he is. Don't hold him like that. <laughs> hold him like you love him. <laughs> Teddy Ralph. Oh, yeah, drop him on his face. So Teddy Ralph was given to us just before we left on this adventure by our friend's daughter, Layla, who was about two at the time. She christened him, so... Ralph it is and we had a little discussion didn't we a little while ago because I we were jokingly discussing if we should do a Teddy Ralph calendar as a sort of um, thing. Let us know if you'd like uh, <laughs> be interested in a Teddy Ralph calendar. But then I brought up the question if we could actually use his image. I, I asked Meg is he copyrighted because I don't know where he's from and Meg laughed and said no some... I nearly peed my pants because this is this is the artwork of a grandma a knitting grandma. Are you sure? Uh, if anybody has ever seen another Teddy Ralph, please let us know. But this is, he's a unique individual. And if he's got a copyright, <laughs> if he's got a copyright, I'll be very shocked. But he holds a hug from Layla. And if we ever miss her or need a kiss or a cuddle, there's one inside from Layla. So. Yeah, and we send back periodic pictures when he's out on top of Ben Nevis or uh, on Wurzburg Bridge having a glass of wine with us. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's very much part of the family now, unfortunately. <laughs> Next question from Greg. Hello, Greg. He says, greetings. He's got two questions, but we'll just do one at a time. Uh, notice that Flora is dragging her derriere a little bit with the classic campus sag. Did you have you, will you consider a suspension upgrade to compensate for the extra weight? I don't think she's got a saggy ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all feeling a little bit of the uh, the campus sag at the moment. I feel like uh, I've, I've got enough peace. <laughs> we had a little bit too much wine last night, but hey ho. To the question. I well, I think we discussed it. Uh, we probably should have used lighter wood. Looking back. Yeah, my dad's noticed this as well, didn't yeah. he? I think we're the type of people we're not overly mechanically minded. So until we take it for an MOT or our mechanic says, guys, you need to upgrade this look at this then i think we'll get round to it um but at the moment what at the moment we can't do anything about it anyway <laughs> so yeah you just gotta let it sag uh but yeah it's one of those one of those things that until it becomes an issue then then we'll sort it um so jacqueline asks uh, would you stray away from a dub if you were to build another van what would be different um we wouldn't necessarily go dub again would we no, I think I'm quite open to suggestions. Uh, you're more, uh, you've got more dub in your veins than I do. Um, I kind of just went along for the ride. I do love the van, I do like VWs, but I'm not um, a die-hard fan, you know. We realise that it isn't just about the VW community, there's a whole van life and self-built van community, which is, if anything, they don't like VWs, but uh, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Would we do another van build? Maybe at some point. We flip from being absolutely in love with Flora and there's no point in doing anything ever again because she's perfect for us, but then we also have times where it's like, I don't want to pull the bed out. I want an oven. I'd also like a toilet and I'd like this and I'd like that. We need a bigger van. 
we flip flop, but most of the time we come back to Flora is the perfect size for us. She's all bought and paid for and we have really adapted quite well to living in her and she provides us with the adventure that we want to. Next question from M-K-P-G-C-E-P-C-E-T <laughs> wants to know, great question, can't pronounce your name, I'm really sorry. If you could listen to one album by any artist for the next year, who would it be? Now, this is a fantastic question. And a bit of a tough one as well. Yeah. I think... Um, if we had to choose one for both of us to listen to. Yeah, one for both of us to listen to. You can't go wrong with By The Way by the Red Hot Chili Peppers because we can sing that bad boy and harmonise. <laughs> the dash cam footage of that album is epic. My personal choice would be Ben Howard. Every Kingdom album, that would be mine. And I might surprise you here, but I have quite a heavy taste in music as well. I like a bit of metal, a bit of prog rock. Um, as an album, I don't know. I'd have to probably just make my own playlist for that. Oh, you cheapskate. What? You said you'd make your own magic mixtape? <laughs> yeah. I can't, I don't know, he's caught me off guard with that one. It's, it's... Beaver Beck says, Who would you take on your adventure if you could choose anyone, dead or alive, but you can't choose each other? Mm, I wouldn't. Option one for me, from a technical point of view, would be Guy Martin, just in case the van breaks down. And I think he's quite a nice, genuine chap and he'd be a good laugh as well. For uh, entertainment value, I think I would choose Carl Pilkington. I don't know if you've seen his um, travel series. He's got quite a unique view on the world. I would choose um, for entertainment and just generally keeping us busy and I think we could do some really fun things with him. Greg Davis. We could do like a Taskmaster and I would definitely win. Um, and for a sensible and practical, I'd choose Ray Mears. The thing with that, we haven't had much call for Ray Mears. Beaver Beck also asks, what do you wish you hadn't taken with you? One answer for that. Three, two, one, surfboards. surfboards. As fun as they were in Sagres that one time, they've travelled every mile of the way with us. We have got them off once and they've caused a constant shadow on the solar panel. So they've reduced our power. One of Cal's biggest gripes. I think we had great intentions of using them in every spot that we got. Yeah. We had a lovely email from Lee the other day, um, which has got multiple questions in. So we'll fire through them quite quick. Yeah. Um, and then maybe in future videos, we'll dwell on them a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So what build videos do you like and who has given you most practical advice on your build? The ones that stick out, especially for electrics, was my biggest concern was uh, Van Life TV. Self-made Van was very handy because he's very honest. He was a sort of beginner like us and he made mistakes and he's very open about it and you can learn from his mistakes and work around it. Uh, G-Dub as well, G-Dub Campers. G-Dub TV. G -Dub, I think it might have changed. Uh, was very helpful as well. And then we just dip in and out of loads. I can't give a very specific list at the moment off the top of my head. Um, would you ever get a pop top and would you have a go at fitting one yourselves? Never try fitting one ourselves, I don't think. <laughs> we didn't put the window in, the body works is something I would never want to touch. But in terms of fitting one, we've kind of got used to the van the way it is, I mean... Um, so on the same lines, would we ever buy a high top van? If we, if we were to convert one again for it to become a motorhome with the DVLA, we need to. I think that's yeah, important to point out. Maybe, but I think we probably wouldn't get a VW for the next one. Mm. What do you like in the van and what would you take out of it? Um, I like, as I said many times, the heater um, is brilliant. We've used it here. Um, the other two nights ago, it was absolutely freezing for some reason. And I love the solar panel making electricity, charging our laptops when the sun is incredible, and also... No, that one does. That's, that's for not, now. That's not for now, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's not for now! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me done then. Uh, <laughs> I like the layout. I like our bed design. And I like the feel of our little home. Take out wise 
The surfboards can go straight away. Yeah. Roof box. Yeah. There's not too much. No. Exterior things. We'd possibly reconsider taking the bikes for such a long trip again. And also we'd change the gas setup. We're currently on camping gas and we'd very much recommend if anyone's watching this and thinking about doing their own conversion, getting a different system. Do we overinflate our tyres due to the extra weight? Overinflate, not them are well. We take them up to the recommended uh, pressure for the weight of the van, but we haven't. No. We do as like, we're told on Yeah, them. we wait to be told. If someone tells us to, then yes. But other than that, no, we just, we do uh, routinely check them and just put them up um, to what it says on the, you know, the door card thing. Last one from Lee. What jobs are we doing whilst we're static for a while? Um, well, this is news, breaking news. I've got a job. I am. Ooh. Ooh. I can now class myself as a remote worker or digital nomad. Mm. So I work 12 hours a week for a company doing bits of social media advertising and stuff like that so that's quite exciting if you know you know and if you'd like to find out send us a message and i'll tell you but i don't want to say on camera just in case they tell me no we don't like you bye <laughs> but what are you doing what am i doing um so i was going to use this time to catch up with our vlogs we've got a huge backlog of we've got a huge backlog <coughs> hey, yeah yeah we've got a big <coughs> We've got a big backlog of vlogs to work through, which I was starting. Um, and then again, I flip-flopped and decided that uploading them now isn't the best time. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just learning new editing techniques and hopefully apply them to our future vlogs. And then also gonna start penning out some other video ideas. Yep. Uh, Natalie has asked, how much water do you use in a day and what sort? <laughs> she didn't ask that. She asked so how much <laughs> She asked how much water do you use it in a day and what water system have you got? So we have a 25 litre water tank mm -hmm. which we use a pressure switch and submersible pump. Mm -hmm. Get my lingo. Yeah, it's a very simplistic system, but it does work rather well. Um, we get through 25 litres in about, well, it depends what we're doing, about four days, yeah, maybe? Like that. Water usage also depends on if we're washing ourselves out of a bucket. Yeah, whilst we're on the campsite, we aren't getting through too much. Yeah. We're also not really doing that much washing up in the van because we've got facilities to do it. Yeah. It's one thing that we know that we consume a hell of a lot less water with this lifestyle than we would at home most definitely bell's adventure wants to know what's you <clears throat> bell's adventure uh, oh yeah bell's oh. adventure oh. <coughs> <laughs> bell's adventure wants to know one thing you couldn't live without in the van it could be minor minor <laughs> it could be major or minor one thing that is truly essential <coughs> time to use this now yeah yeah one thing that's truly essential, I think. <laughs> so a pine cone just fell out of the tree. About a meter from the camera. <laughs> so is the humble brush. Uh, we use this more than anything in the van, to be quite honest with you. Especially here, there's loads of pine needles on the floor and we're traipsing in dirt every single time we get in the van. So this is essential and it keeps my little princess nice. Don't you dare. <laughs> it keeps the dreads in order as well. <laughs> Uh, what could I not live without? And my notebook and pens. And I have multiple notebooks and pens for different jobs. Felt tips are nearly dry, but... <laughs> See if we can get some more from the supermarket. <laughs> so that is a brush and pens. Next question is from Jenny. Uh, hello guys, do you have a fridge in the van? If so, which one? If not, where do you keep your milk and fridge items? So we have a cool box which is powered by 12 volt, which is rarely plugged in. So we kind of reduce the amount of fresh 
things that we buy. We're eating a lot more veggies than we are meat and we also are drinking plant milk so that doesn't go off quite as fast as cow's milk. We've just had to adapt to it. It's um, the main reason we don't use it is it's not efficient. We've adapted our our diets to it really, and yeah. uh, I'm not bothered by it. It would be nice to have a fridge to be able to like, maybe do meal prep in these situations, mm. but um, no, nah, we we cope. Uh, question two from Greg: Have you noticed any health benefits from being on the Van Life diet? We were discussing this earlier. I think the main benefit we've seen or have uh, felt felt and consciously done is to drink more water. Um, finding like squash is near enough impossible uh, in Europe, we found. So we're drinking straight water, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I'll... Straight I'll water. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan, but it's, it's, I'm getting used to it. And we're trying to like measure out how much we drink a day. Um, and I did feel quite, quite a lot better after doing that, I think. The only thing is you pee more. So that means the jug has to come out more. <laughs> That's a bit of an inconvenience sometimes, but yeah, the water's the main thing. Flowertot007 wants to know if we would consider changing the front bench seat for a captain seat, as they have a T5 and their partner complains that the bench seat is uncomfortable. It's not the most comfortable seat in the world, I will um, agree to that. Well, because Meg drives, I'm their pretty much passenger and then we swivel it around and that's my little spot as well. So I've got quite used to it. Um, it's very handy for the storage because it's got a bigger base to it and it just gives me a bit more room. I sort of, I can sort of semi curl up on it because yeah. <laughs> I'm banished to the little chair while our little Miss Princess with the job gets the whole bed to itself. If a uh, cow wants to, he could put a nice little bit of B-roll right here of him curling up <laughs> on it, but let's see if he does it or not. They also said that they think they'd missed the width when it swivelled. Yeah, the only benefit we sort of saw about that, I guess you could put armrests and we could consider maybe sliding a, a little like... Um, Compressor top, fridge? Top loading maybe. call box. In the gap, but then are we benefiting much from it? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I would um, do it now at least. I've got to use it, it's my space and I can sort of spread out a bit easier on it. Elizabeth asks, how often are you able to get food and supplies? Are you experiencing any particular shortages? So we haven't been to the supermarket for getting on for a month now, which I'm really missing. I'm not. I just, we have to send Armando to the shop with a list and just explain what we want. We ask him if there's anything that it's particularly short of. No, we're fine for toilet rolls and cleaning stuff and bread and things like that. And Armando goes about once a week and he managed to pick us up gas as well which has been really handy yeah. so uh, like we said earlier we haven't left this campsite um, it's fenced off and we just <laughs> walk the perimeter now and again but while caged animals. Yeah. Luckily it's a huge um, area and it's empty so it's 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 okay. Yep. Hannah <coughs> wants to know what our favorite meal to cook in the van is. What's your favourite meal to eat, I suppose, because you don't cook? <laughs> I've become quite a fan of the cauliflower curry. Um, wasn't too sure at first, you know. Cauliflower's not my go-to. Yeah, it's our favourite. And if you'd like to see that recipe, we'll also link it down in the description below, as you'll find it on our blog website. Uh, what's my favourite thing to cook in the van? It's always a special occasion when we have a steak, mm. like Christmas. That was banging. Um, but fajitas are always a good shout and we also get a bit excited when it's burger time. Mm. Yeah, just something a bit not pasta, yeah. <laughs> which we do eat a lot because it's, it's, it's easy and fills a hole. <clears throat> Janice is adding to Hannah's question, what meal have you not been able to have and that you've missed the most? Because she can't wait to get to the Chinese buffet which I know which Chinese buffet you're talking about, Janison's. That would do nicely quite now, actually. I think we can probably um, put everything into one umbrella. Anything that is roasted in the oven. I think one meal would possibly be like a roast or a carvery, because they don't do carveries in Europe, and I can't cook one. So probably just, yeah, stuff like you can roast in the oven. Like roast lamb or roast chicken. Mm. 
And Sarah asks, do you miss me? Yes, I do, Sarah. I always remember our little chat and our little mindfulness book. All right, this question is from Amanda and Nicole. Since your followers have increased, by what... Hello. Just summarise. <laughs> Basically, it's a long question, but what percentage of our daily or weekly activity is dictated by making videos? I would say it's probably less than I thought it would have been. That is dependent on what we are doing, uh, but we haven't ever really gone too far out of our way to make, make sure we film stuff. Yeah. You know, we, we're not putting ourselves under a strict schedule. We're not doing extra stuff for Patreon. So I think the biggest one we have is if we want to get drone footage. That, yeah. re that requires a bit more logistics. Like, okay, I'll jump out here, you drive the van, and I've either got a push bike, and that takes a bit of time. The actual filming doesn't get in the way too much, but I think something that has is that I was at least focusing on the numbers too much. Um, so I put off the idea of doing any more cooking videos because they get way less views than uh, we, n we normally get, uh, whatever that is. Um, so I tended to put stuff off that I didn't think was gonna be highly viewed and that was a bit silly because that's not really the reason why we started doing all this. Um, I think I lost my way a little bit, didn't go too crazy, uh, but I think we should be more sort of true to ourselves and just do whatever we want um, because we keep telling each other. If we are getting a bit stressed with it, we just tell each other that it doesn't matter. I mean, We want to put out our adventure but we don't want to live life behind the lens yeah. or do something because it looks good. Yeah. Um, which yeah. that's why it make YouTube sometimes can be so easy for us because it's just what's happening yeah. in our day-to-day -day life kind of thing and we don't want it to ever become a chore or feel like a job from mm. our feedback from what would you like to see the cooking videos the people that actually are a part of the channel and a part of our community want to see yeah. me cooking and now I'm thinking if it gets one tenth of the views so be it you know a common pitfall is when people start chasing the numbers then it gets to a stage where they've got to drum up drama or use think, clickbait yeah some like shocking thumbnail which during this time i've seen quite a lot of and we don't want to be called out for doing that kind of stuff i'm aware that if we did do a shocking thumbnail like us with our masks on and lockdown q a quarantine that we would get more views um it just that's the nature of the game but i don't ever want to do that but I know you've got to chase trends as well, but yeah. Next question is from Sean. He says, hi guys. Uh, so are the squirrels brown or red? What birds of prey do you see? Uh, I'm in the process of converting my van. Plenty of time to do it now. Uh, hope you have plenty of puzzles to occupy your mind. So, um, we've seen quite a lot of different wildlife. On the trip, On the trip yeah. yeah. I think the first red squirrel I saw was up in Scotland, I want to say. Yeah, there's a, I've seen a brown squirrel in Spain mm. when we were filling up the water container in that oh, park. Yeah, he came up close. We had a spotted woodpecker just outside the van the other day. I can hear him now somewhere down there, I think, um, which is quite nice to see. We saw a lot of little lizards in Portugal. Yeah, the, a lot. the tor tortoise, terrapins, whatever they're called. Which one's going water? <laughs> <laughs> in that, in the yeah. uh, New Year's fountain in Tavira in Portugal. Yeah. The storks that we saw throughout oh, yeah. Portugal. We saw a lot of storks, which I was quite surprised by. Massive nests yeah. on top of telegraph poles. Yeah, everywhere. Um, we saw, when we were in the Outer Hebrides, we saw dolphins and... And in Scarborough. And Scarborough, and we saw seals in the Outer Hebrides on... Yeah on the rocks. We've seen quite a varied amount. Birds of prey actually we saw, we think we saw um, eagles. Yeah. Um, well, Herons, but they're not necessarily birds of prey are they? No. Um, yeah, so the wildlife has been quite varied and quite nice to see and to occupy our minds I started learning um, After Effects, just the basics. That's like an editing program where you can do more flashy uh, effects and stuff but um, so I've been diving into that, downloading tutorials and sort of getting learning something new whilst we're here. I've been listening to more podcasts and downloading more music. Yeah, we haven't found ourselves being bored very often. Uh, we are rinsing Netflix's library and working our way through that. But 
I don't know, the days just fill themselves. Yeah. Thank you very much for sending them in and getting involved. We really appreciate it. We want to do some more stuff like this in the future. So probably time with the cooking videos. We'll ask for recipes. What you guys want to see, really, like we said earlier. Um, we've got some fantastic ideas from um, the comments that we got the other day. So we've got like a, a page in one of those notepads with different ideas. Um, some things that we're going to need to wait for. But now that we've got the gas, we can plow full steam ahead with the cooking videos. We just got to make sure the shops have still got food in, which shouldn't be a problem. That is it from camp lockdown. We are safe and well. Again, I think we're very fortunate. I don't think we could be in a better place in regards to in our van, in regards to safety yeah. and security. Yeah, and being with um, Mel and Armando is brilliant as well. Because uh, we see a lot of van life people struggling, getting stuck in places where they're not being very welcomed. Um, so we have kind of landed on our feet in this situation, we just don't know how long it's going to go on for. So we are thinking about all of the van lifers that are having a difficult time and we're also thinking about everybody at home, whether you are in the UK or elsewhere. Thoughts with you, keep safe and keep well. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>